Welcome to the Bernoulli Experiment and its likelihood. So here we're going to start talking about experiments and trying to come up with how they relate to probability because ultimately that's what we're going to be after is how does this actually relate to probability and how can we make inference about populations based off of a sample. So we have to start connecting samples and probability in order to make this happen. So let's look at the Bernoulli experiment. It's the most simple experiment there is, and that's why we always start here. And it turns out that you can turn lots of experiments into Bernoulli experiments. Uh, also, you'll hear these Bernoulli experiments commonly called Bernoulli trials, because each one is a trial that you do. All right, so the basic idea is you have an experiment that has cl two clearly defined outcomes. Uh, typically, they're called success and failure. But it could be score, miss, sale, no sale, it's ripe or it's rotten, meaning it's it's good to eat or not good to eat. Uh, you could have the chromosomes XX or XY. Uh, you, you don't have anything in the middle. That's the key here. There's only two outcomes, and you will be having one of those outcomes. Okay, so the next step is a random variable. We've been talking about random variables. What do they do? They assign a number to the events or outcomes in a sample space. So here, this is really simple. Since we only have two outcomes, we only need two numbers. Okay, so here we're going to say it's going to be a 1 if it's a success, and it's going to be 0 otherwise. So um, essentially, we assign 1 to success and 0 to failure. It's easy to do. Now the question is, why 1 and 0 and not 1 and 2? Because a lot of people think, well, I'll just start enumerating them. Well, it turns out that if you go with 1 and 0, life is easier. Also, mathematicians love 0 and 1. And this uh, that's their favorite set of numbers. They'll tell you, oh, they like some crazy number like E or Pi or some you know, weird transcendental number. But in reality, they like 0 and 1. They just won't admit it. All right, so now that we have a random variable, we can have a probability distribution. And here's the probability distribution associated with it. So uh, f of x is going to be equal to p uh, if x is equal to 1, which means success. And it's going to be equal to 1 minus p if x is equal to 0 or failure. And notice these have to add up to 1, so these are my only options. And here, p is the probability of success, and it has to be between 0 and 1. Okay, and this is the parameter of the distribution. Now, as we go through lots of probability distributions, they're going to have parameters, and these parameters govern how the probability distribution behaves. And that's important to know because these are the things that belong to the population. The population is governed by some parameter that says how uh, likely something is to happen or unlikely something is to happen. And this is the thing that we want to make inference about. This is the thing we want to estimate or test. All right, so we're going to switch here a little bit. We're going to take our Bernoulli trials. We have uh, the sample space. We have the random variable. We have the probability distribution. And now what we want to do is say, well, what if I collected some data? How could I relate these to my uh, you know, probability? And this is going to be one of the links here is this idea of a likelihood. So I'm going to have x1, x2, and xn. All these are capitalized, and these are all random variables. Okay, They're all coming from Bernoulli trials. These are not numbers. These are the how I'm measuring the first experiment, how I'm measuring the second experiment, all the way up to how I'm measuring the nth experiment. And these are all going to be the same trial type thing, so they should be identical. And they're going to have the same parameter p, that's why they said the same parameter here. We want to know what's the probability I would get this data, where we have little x1, little x2, dot dot dot, to little xn are the actually observed values. So what is the probability that we actually see this data that I just collected? Okay, and this is what the statement means. So um, here we go. So say what's the probability uh, capital X1 equals little x1 and probability that or and x2 equals little x2 capital xn equals little xn well that is the same as the intersections here so i can replace these commas by intersections and if i add this condition of independence that i did up here 
what can I do? Well, now that I know that they're independent, meaning that the probability that I see success or failure on one does not influence the probability I would see the success or failure on any of the other ones. So that's what it means to be independent in this case. Well, that means I can multiply these together. And wait a minute, we have the formula for this here. Uh, each one of these, we just have to realize what it is. And I'm going to write it down in a weird sort of way. So this way I've written this here is still the same probability distribution as above. And I'm going to let you kind of work it out for yourself to show that it actually works. So this, how I've written this here is the same as, and hold on, I'm going to scroll back up, the same as this. They're exactly the same, it's just how I wrote it. I can write it in one line instead of having to have two lines in cases to worry about. Okay, so here I would have it for the first one, and then the second observation, and the third op and the nth observation. And notice all of these are little x's here, which means those are our actual data points, which is awesome. They're our actual data points. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to group all the P's together because I have a P here and a P here and a P here. And then I have one minus P here and a one minus P here. I'm going to group all of those together um, because then I can use properties of exponents to rewrite this formula that looks like this. So I have P, which is the probability of success, to the sum of the XI. And I have one minus P to the sum of one minus XI. And if I take this one step further, I can end up with this formula, which is the same here, but notice that if I add one to itself, n times, I'm gonna end up with n here. And that this number here, we actually know this. This is calculated from our data. It's just the sum of the values that are ones and zeros. And this is why ones and zeros really, really make sense here. Because every time I have a success, I put a one. And every time I have a failure, I put a zero. So if I add those up, the only thing that's getting added together are the successes. Okay? So here, this is the total number of successes that you're going to have. Uh, so it's very, very straightforward that this can be calculated from the data. I have this value or this formula here that allows me to calculate the probability. Okay. Now, this is the idea of a likelihood. Okay? Um, it's the probability of the data given the parameter. And notice there is clearly a given line here. So it's like exactly like conditional probability. Now we'll have to talk about the parameter here in the next video on exactly what we mean by this. Uh, a frequentist would say, well, P is a fixed value. Uh, a Bayesian would say P is a random value. So this really makes sense in that case. But I do have a formula for it, okay? And this is the thing I wish to make inference about. And if you look at this, this is on the wrong side of the probability kind of statement, okay? Right, if I want to make a statement about it, it needs to be over here and not over here. But we'll worry about that later. All right, so you also might see a likelihood written as L, and I usually do this. I just use capital D. It just means all the data. I don't want to write out every piece of data I have. I just put a D there, given theta, and here theta indicates the parameter slash parameters, because as we go across different distributions, the parameter is probably going to change, but we need a generic label for a parameter, and theta will be it. Uh, you might see it LX given theta or LY given theta. And here X and Y just re represent the data that was observed. Okay, So these are observed data and these are the parameters that are, are in the likelihood. And that's pretty much what we have. So in the next video, we're going to start talking about how do we make inference from a likelihood and then take that a next step further and start doing something Bayesian with it. So we'll worry about that in the next video. So see you there.